This is Pentecost and the day celebrated as the birthday of the church. The day when the Holy Spirit sent by God came upon the disciples and changed their outlook, attitude and approach to mission and to each other forever. That unique gift continues to influence ordinary people to this day. And so today is a day of celebration for the church and for Christ's disciples everywhere. May all of you joining this recording have a sense of that celebration and potential for growing the kingdom. And may you all know the welcome and the blessing of worshipping God together. Let's gather our hearts. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. The Lord says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Let's pray together. Loving and living God, today we rejoice and remember the beginnings of the church. We remember your mighty power. We consider your transforming power. On this day of Pentecost, we remember all that you brought about in the space of a few minutes for the apostles. Their expectation was revolutionised. Their expectations turned upside down. Their attitudes changed forever. One moment consumed by fear, the next radiating confidence. One moment uncertain of the future, the next sure of their calling. One moment wrestling with doubt, the next full of faith. One moment hiding behind locked doors, the next preaching boldly to the crowds. Can we believe that you can do this for us too? Can we commit to that hope? Come to us, Lord, breathing new energy into our lives and new life into our souls. Transform us, our fears, anxieties and doubt. Fill us with confidence and faith and a new way of looking at life. New possibilities of living in this community inspired by your spirit and bearing rich fruit to your glory. Forgive us our reluctance to commit. Help us to accept that we may not yet be ready, that we are fearful and held down by our human perceptions. We pray that you release us from ourselves to a willingness to commit to your way of living in Jesus Christ. May your church and this church become a place of transformation where people come to be together in heart and soul to worship you and grow in your love and service. May we never close our minds to your possibilities because you challenge our preconceptions. Open our hearts and our lives now to accept that Jesus is the way. So now we pray together the prayer he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Let's listen to our scripture readings for today. The Old Testament reading is from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Some verses from chapter 36. The Lord said, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. Then I will bring you to your land. I will sprinkle you with pure water and you will be clean from all your impurities. I will purify you from all your idols. I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit within you. I will remove 
the heart of stone from your body and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you. I will take the initiative and you will obey my statutes and carefully observe my regulations. Then you will live in the land I gave to your fathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. The Lord said to Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to the breath, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these corpses so that they may live. So I prophesied as I was commanded and the breath came into them. They lived and stood on their feet, an extremely great army. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Acts, some verses from chapter 2. Now when the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in the one place. Suddenly, a sound like a violent wind blowing came from heaven and filled the entire house where they were sitting. And tongues spreading out like a fire appeared to them and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven residing in Jerusalem. When the sound occurred, a crowd gathered and was in confusion because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Completely baffled, they said, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it then that each one of us hears them in our own native language? But Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You men of Judea and all you who live in Jerusalem know this and listen carefully to what I say. In spite of what you think, these men are not drunk, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is what was spoken about through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it will be, God says, that I will pour out my spirit on all people, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Now, this is an exciting day and an exciting time. The time of remembering the ascension of Christ has passed 10 days ago. Much of the world has been praying through the international Thy Kingdom Come initiative. Now that runs between Ascension and Pentecost and also the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland has begun. We have a new moderator in Jim Wallace of Orkney, perhaps better known to you in his life in the public arena of politics. He is only the second church elder to be appointed moderator. But this demonstrates once again the role and the responsibilities given to and expected from the ordained leaders of the church, minister and elder alike. If you were watching the General Assembly on Saturday, you would see that the new moderator has two chaplains and one, some of you might recognise, as the former minister of Fenwick Parish Church, the Reverend Fraser McNaughton. As it happens, the moderator's other chaplain is the Reverend Marjorie McPherson, who was a chaplain and tutor to my year group of ministry students during our vocational training. The speeches yesterday were inspiring. Prince William, who is the Lord High Commissioner to the General Assembly, spoke so very movingly of his emotional connections with Scotland and his support for the National Church. Martin Fair, the outgoing moderator, spoke of the work which the church needs to do in Scotland. 
work needed to challenge and combat the many, many examples of social injustice, child poverty, mental health, substance abuse, criminality and death associated with drug trafficking, unemployment, bigotry, people trafficking, young women sold as sex slaves, men held in illegal gang employment, racial inequality, inequality of opportunity, climate issues, refugee evictions, and Martin Fair said that as long as these situations existed, then there was work to do and the church was best placed working with other agencies and in local communities to make a difference through loving and compassionate service to others in Jesus' name. Yet what about the church itself? What is to happen to that? The institution of the church is in decline and this last year has seen great challenges to the nation, the national church's ability to support ordinary parish church congregations. What if, Martin Fair said, what if the church can no longer support the work of Crossreach? What if the church has not the resources for ordinary ministry and mission. Today we are asking the what if questions. But that first day of Pentecost, the disciples were gathered and asking the what if questions. They were still behind locked doors, still unsure of their safety, still fearful of the authorities. Outside their door, there were probably very similar issues of the day as Martin Fair listed, and probably more. What if nothing more happened? What if that oppression continued and all the stuff that Jesus had promised never came to pass? The disciples had Jesus for 40 days after his resurrection. They knew that he was alive. They had had the explanations and the time to understand and comprehend and believe about him. They knew that he was who he said he was, the Son of God. We have Jesus too. We are here this morning as witness to our belief in Jesus as risen and the King of the Church. We want to know what Christ wants of us. We want to know what is going to happen next, just as the disciples did. What does Jesus want of us? Well, he wants us to be his disciples, first and foremost. He wants us to be more than he's wanting us to do. That will come. He said to all of his disciples, come and follow me. Come and spend time with me. And so they did, watching what he did, listening to what he said, being with him and being with each other and asking the why and the how questions of him and of each other. Now they were on their own, remembering all that he had said, nurturing each other and trying to work out what to do next. And so are we. We are on our own, without the physical presence of Jesus, yet in the mystery of baptism and communion, the very sacraments of the church, we have the great gift of the awareness of Christ through remembering with our minds and through the physicality of the water of baptism and the bread and the wine of communion. And now, today, we celebrate Pentecost, the giving of the Spirit, the coming of God's gift of the Holy Spirit to enable and guide and reveal. As the coming of the Holy Spirit completely changed the lives and outlook of the disciples, so it will for us 
if we are willing to trust Jesus with our very being, if we are willing to be transformed as the disciples were. The church can simply be a building or it can be a community of people and a place of transformation. I want to tell you about my friend Margaret, a wonderful example of a godly lady who was the midwife, the district nurse and the health visitor in Darville for many years. When she was at the end of her training and the night before her final exams, she was in bed in the dormitory of the nurse's home. She tossed and turned deep in fear as her mind seemed blank and she could remember nothing of the anatomy and physiology and the nursing theory and practice that she had spent the last three years of her life learning about. She tried to pray, but words wouldn't come and eventually she sat up, put on her light and reached for her Bible which was on the bedside table, looking for some words of comfort in the pages. She told me how her Bible seemed to fall open at John's Gospel and the words of chapter 14 and verse 26 seemed to jump out to her and she read Jesus' words to his disciples. But the Counsellor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will remind you of everything you have learned. Peace I leave with you. So do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. With these words in her heart, she put out the light and went to sleep. She sat her final exams the next day and in time was awarded the silver medal for distinction that year as the student with the highest mark in the final exams. Today's scripture readings from the prophetic words of Ezekiel and Joel and Luke's description of Pentecost convey the power of the Holy Spirit to breathe energy and passion, revelation and confidence and peace into ordinary people so that ordinary lives are transformed, not from the outside, but from the inside. Not from reading about other people's experiences, valuable and inspiring though they can be, but because we are willing to allow ourselves to grow closer to Jesus, to spend more of our time with him, that is to involve him in more of our ordinary everyday life so that it becomes extraordinary. We are willing to ask him and receive from him a sense of nearness, of proximity to Jesus, to share his passion for life in all its fullness and to be ready to be fruitful in his name as the Holy Spirit enables us. This week at General Assembly and in the weeks to come, the National Church will find ways to be fruitful for Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit working in ordinary people, through the passion of every one of us for the mission of God in the communities where we are and through the love of our Saviour shared by us with others, all will be well. May we know a blessing from God's word heard and preached in this place and to God be all the glory. Amen. Now let's pray for each other. Loving Lord, on this Pentecost Sunday, we pray for your church in the world, your people who meet in vast cathedrals, those who stand outside, those who gather in homes, those 
just beginning to go into buildings again. Those who have no place to worship. Show us how you want us to be your church and you. We pray for your promised land, not a place, but the kingdom where you have prepared a place for us and where we already dwell in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. May we be ready to share that vision and dream with others, living as your people, our lives reflecting your glory and purpose and proclaiming your love in word and in worship, in faith and in action. We pray for our family and friends. We ask you to comfort, sustain, heal and bring your peace to those we know who are filled with anxiety, exhausted with care, fearful of pain, lost in loneliness. We ask you to release our country from the oppression of disease and bid us share our resources that we have, that all may have access to vaccinations and the health care they need. For none are safe until all are safe. We pray for our Queen and the new leaders in local and national governments. We pray for our partners in international mission and the local pioneer ministries in our own presbytery. We pray for our own Kirk Session meeting. May your Holy Spirit move and inspire us all as we seek your kingdom way for this congregation and this community. Today, we pray for your inspiring and guidance on all the commissioners to the General Assembly this next week. Give us a lively interest in the work of our national church and an awareness of our part in it. We ask you to bless and inspire the new moderator, Jim Wallace, as he leads the national church in his year of office. All this we ask in Jesus' name, and in Pentecost, faith and expectation. Amen. And so before we leave each other, a blessing. As we leave each other, and this time of praise and worship, may we go out in joy and expectation of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives bringing gladness and bringing transformation. And may the love of God the Father, the blessing of Jesus the Son and the keeping of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and always. Amen. <laughs>